Hello, welcome back to uh, this series where I talk about things that you get in this game that you guys suggest to me. Uh, today's episode is uh, Paraffin Enforcer. I don't have any rhyme or reason as to how I'm going through these, however I'm just doing like a little pros and cons video for whatever units and cards you guys want to see. Kind of fun. I've, I realize it's kind of redundant because I did these videos with Cranberry, but we didn't go super super in depth. And also those videos are kind of outdated at this point because I've played a lot more, but, you know. It's just kind of like a little a little more of a deep dive on each of these units that you suggest to me. What do you want to hear more about? So feel free, leave me comments, tell me what you want to hear more of. I will add them to the list and I'll go through them as we go. As you can see, Paraffin Enforcer is up today. Let's begin. This is going to be, I imagine, a pretty short one compared to the other ones. Uh, you can see my notes here on the notepad to keep us on track are, um, yeah. So, let's begin. Paraffin Enforcer, and when we talk about units like this, I want to compare them to units in their clan and not compare them to units outside of their clan, because Paraffin Enforcer is going to go up against other units within his own clan. So you're going to see him plus one other unit, or two other units from his clan, typically. So, the first thing we should talk about with Terrapin Enforcer is obviously his stat line. He's a 1 energy 15-15 with 2 space. In terms of raw stats, if you want to look at raw stats in this game, you, I think that for a damage dealing perspective, your raw stats unit to look at is Horned Warrior. He's a 30 attack, 4 health unit. He's your gold standard. This is your, this is your stat line for a pure damage dealer, and or a DPS, right? 30 attack, roughly. Then you get into, like, you know, Awoken has... You know, switch to units, because we're talking units. I know I'm comparing him across other clans, but I want to get a baseline in here, right? Awoken... Like, comparing it to Awoken units is a mistake, right? Like, quick and 25-3. You can see a pretty clear pattern for him. Stygian's different, but uh, the other one to compare him to, of course, within the clan is Paraffin Thug. He's a 23. You get the idea, right? Roughly, for raw stats, it, at 1 energy, 2 space, they're giving you... 30 attack, 4 health, and then if they're not giving you that, you're losing some of your attack for an effect, right? So like Awoken, your Animus loses 27 of that attack, but gets multi-strike and has buffs contextual to the clan. Uh, where is he? Branded Warrior, there he is, is a much lower stat line, 10 attack, 5 health, but he starts with rage and gets to slay to apply rage, things like that. Just want to get that baselining out of the way. Because when we talk about that, right, we then look at Paraffin Enforcer. Let me, do the, let me eliminate everyone else here. We look at Paraffin Enforcer. He's a 15-15. What does this say to me? He's confused. Paraffin Enforcer is confused. That's all. He's stuck. He's between. He's 15 attack, which means he's doing half the damage that you would expect of a unit in the DPS role for this cost. But he also has 15 health, which is like... Why do you have 15 health? I certainly don't know. So... And uh, he's not going to act as a tank, is he? Maybe you could make him act as a tank, but this clan already has a better tank in Lady of the Reformed, and maybe you're going to act him, have him act as a DPS unit, but you have a better DPS in Paraffin Thug who actually fits into the role, or you have something else, I don't know. It's just, I, it's weird, right? I think Paraffin Enforcer is just confused. This card, in terms of design philosophy, I don't understand what he's supposed to do. I think that... If they want to pivot him into a tank, it's a horrible idea, because Melting has no really good, consistent source of damage. But I think you're supposed to make that happen through reforming cards. I don't know. It's, I don't know. I really I really don't know what's going on with Paraffin Enforcer here. But, that being said, he's, he's not the worst, right? I have taken him a few times. He's been in winning runs. Let's just bring up the notepad. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I guess, let's talk about the numbers on 15-15 for a second, right? Because usually you're going to pick Paraffin Enforcer alongside a Burnout Rector. Because I, I haven't touched his Strike Friendly Burnout Units gain Rage 3. Can you guess why? It's because it's really bad. I, I In the pros column here I have that he does not say Burnout. This is a pro because having a consistent carry who doesn't burn out is very important for... Melting, I feel like, looking at Lady of the Reform, or not Lady of the Reform, Lady of the House, the 2540, with Burnout 3. That unit would be a really, really strong pickup very often. I would really like to pick her a lot, but 
The Burnout 3 makes her really awkward to play with because then you're specking into a bunch of Burnout extensions and she falls short on Relentless Combats, right? So Paraffin Enforcer has it. Like, the DPS role burning out, you need to have Lady of the Reform to go with them, right? So Paraffin Enforcer doesn't burn out and he applies Burnout or he applies Rage to the floor. It sounds good in theory. However, at two space, he doesn't fit on the floor with Rector. If you're playing Lady, Rector, and Paraffin Enforcer, uh, you don't have room, right? Unless you're picking space, and then you're picking space for Paraffin Enforcer. And here, this right here, this is the next major point, something that I realized after playing with Paraffin Enforcer, something I really want to drive home to you here. Paraffin Enforcer on that floor, you have to take space to play him. And he's worse than a draft when you, when you get right down to it, right? On the floor of Lady, Rector, Paraffin Enforcer, He's bad, like he's worse than a draft, because a draft is going so Paraffin Enforcer, let's say let's say you hit the nuts, right? You give him multi strike and he's doing really well. Right? Let's say you give him multi strike plus ten. So he's doing fifty damage, which is reasonable, respectable, and he's applying six rage to your to your lady and your rector. So he's worth uh twenty four damage plus so he's worth seventy four damage. Alternatively, you can just play a draft who is baseline only worth twenty, and then you just reform him like, I don't know three times without having taken space so you don't have to take up a draw priority right like in when you get the nuts paraffin enforcer is going to be better than a draft but on average a draft is just gonna be more damage and not require the same amount of space right that's the that's the idea there uh, I, the, I I will say there's there's one case for paraffin enforcer that I've had and been oh this is kind of cool but it was on one of the expert challenges. So it's not really, like it was an expert challenge where you get extra space from the baseline, right from, from the go. So it's not as uh, good of an indicator, but I had Deranged Brute, Paraffin Enforcer, Lady of the Reformed on a floor, and then I just applied Burnout 1 with Wax and Spike to all of them. And Paraffin Enforcer then got to scale them up with Rage and the Deranged Brute got to amplify that rage and it was kind of cool but like it's just it's not good right the thing is paraffin enforcer he's good in some fringe cases because him adding the rage director right the plus 15 damage that he adds like the not the plus 15 the plus nine or plus six i guess it is that he adds as well as the 15 damage that he brings to the table is enough something i talked about in the paraffin thug video is that Para you need something to clean up after a Burnout Rector. In the early game, Burnout Rector will kill heavies, and then you need something to kill the backline. And in the late game, Para or Rector falls short of killing bosses. Or not bosses, uh, 190 health heavies, he's at 145. He needs something to help him clean up. And Paraffin Enforcer can fill that role, but you have to end up taking space, I guess. Like, I one thing I haven't tried, and something that, I mean, is maybe good, but good luck also, is Lady of the Reformed, Paraffin Enforcer, and then just, like, a bunch of drafts behind them, however many you can fit on the floor. I don't know. The thing is, we when you have to sit here and theorycraft a bunch of situations where this unit is good, I think that it's a pretty clear indicator that the unit is bad on average. However, uh, he's 15 damage, and he doesn't burn out. So there are times, like, he's... He's not awful. Like, he can get you through the early game, I guess, is what I should give Paraffin Enforcer. However, this unit gets to the late game, and he falls off very much. Just like Animus of uh, Speed, just, you get to the late game with Paraffin Enforcer, and you hit the wall. He just, he hits the wall, 190 health enemies show up, he does 15 damage to them, and they laugh, and they go, ha ha ha, good one, nice. And in the cons section, like, I gotta tell you, the cons for Paraffin Enforcer, there's no actual active downside to this unit. Like, you're not hurting yourself other than just the opportunity cost, right? It's, I didn't really have anything that I wanted to write here. It's just that Paraffin Enforcer's biggest problem is that he's outclassed. In, in a world of just every other unit, like, basically... The only real clan that doesn't have a better answer to putting something on the backline is Umbra, because Umbra doesn't have a unit that makes any that does. They just don't have a unit that goes on the backline. Your best one is like Morsel Master, but look at it like this, right? In Umbra, Morsel Master is a ten ten, and he doubles Morsels. And then over here, this guy's a fifteen fifteen. I think the Paraffin Enforcer is hot on the table to be like he's got to be soon for a rework right he needs some help i think they did a pretty good job in this wild mutations of making most of the units feel viable 
Uh, Melting has a lot of stinkers, though. I think that there's just a lot of units in this clan that I don't like. Namely, Lady of the House, Paraffin Enforcer, right? Wickless Baron, but, like, not so much after the buffs. But, yeah. Paraffin Enforcer, he's just... He's bad because everything else is better, I think, is the big takeaway. He's not bad. Like, the stat line is confusing. Is he a tank? Is he a damage dealer? The answer is, yeah, kinda. But no to both of them. And his effect is just bad because his effect is kind of like... Alpha Fiend scaling for the entire floor, or like Branded Warrior scaling for the entire floor, but only if the entire floor says Burnout, which sounds good on paper, but to have an effect of Burnout floor, you need to have Lady of the Reform, which was another two space, and then you'd have Paraffin Enforcer, and then you're only left with one space to play something else, or you take space and then you're left with like, no, like then you take space and then you put Rector down, and it's like, wow, I gave six attack to a man with 145 attack, huh? Well, that's not very good. Yeah. In in conclusion, that's not very good. Thank you for watching. Uh, Paraffin Enforcer is an interesting one. I hope they do something for him in the future. I imagine they won't leave him in this set, state for a while. Uh, fun lore fact for the lore, uh, lore video here. Paraffin Enforcer is actually higher ranking in the melting uh, ecosystem than Paraffin Thug. And yet, in gameplay, Paraffin Thug beats the shit out of him. That's what we call Ludo narrative dissonance, baby. I think that's how you use those words. Anyway, uh, <laughs> lore video, maybe, right? People have asked for it. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Uh, I'll, I'll think about it. I'll, I'll start writing a script, maybe. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed, don't forget to drop me that like. Leave me a comment. Tell me who else you want to shit on or uh, you want me to praise. What other card do you want to hear about? I'll be happy to talk about these cards until we go through them all, or, you know, whatever. I think I'm gonna, after this video, instead of doing any more card reviews like this, though, I'm gonna go into uh, talking about the champions and all the champion paths uh, in depth. Uh, so probably I'll do one video on each champion, so that's what you can look forward to down the line. Uh, I will see you in the next one. I hope you have a good one. Farewell.